Hello everybody and welcome! Okay, now that Kerbal Space Program 1.2 has been officially released, let's look at some stuff that will make your life launching little green creatures to space a lot easier. Keep in mind, this is my personal opinion and your preferences may vary. First off, for a lot of those features you need to activate advanced tweakables in the settings and voila! You have a few more options in the editor. Here we go! Landing leg rotation bug fixed! This may have been a pet peeve for me, but ever since KSP 1.1 the rotational center of landing legs was completely off. Rotating them by pressing QWEASD was a source of constant frustration and local rotation with the rotation tool was nigh impossible. Thankfully this has now been fixed and I can enjoy building oversized landers again. Wheels are improved. The previous major version of Kerbal Space Program introduced completely new wheel physics. One of the drawbacks, however, was that you could no longer drive other parts and therefore use wheels for doors and other weird construction stuff. Well, those sad times are over, because KSP 1.2 now allows you to do that again. New Part Categories Remember the time when you had to search decouplers in the construction category or batteries in the utility section? I myself have always been setting up my own custom categories to make things more orderly. But Squad have done a great job reorganizing the parts by introducing new categories in the editor. For instance, coupling for all things decoupler or docking port related and payload for cargo bays and fairings. This makes building your rockets easier right off the bat. New fairings. Speaking of building, the fairing parts have been reworked and now support interstage nodes. This means you can attach stuff not only to the bottom of the fairing, but also higher up. If you do so, a truss will appear, but it is physicsless and has no use except not making your payload appear to float in the air. You can, however, use this for building really cool things, like for instance my envisioning of the SpaceX Interplanetary Transport System vehicle. Fairings can also not be staged, which I like for builds where I use fairings for structural stuff. Again, see my interplanetary spaceship interpretation. Fuel flow. One of the more interesting decisions of the developers was to change the way rockets consume fuel. Every stack now drains its liquid fuel and oxidizer evenly from all parts. You can adjust this by changing the priority values in the editor. There is also a neat fuel flow overlay showing you where an engine draws its propellant. As a side note, ion engines now show you levels for xenon gas and electricity in the staging view on the left hand side, which is neat. Better interplanetary travel. In the previous versions you had to do a lot of guesswork when it came to gravity assists. Now you can increase the amount of steps your orbit will project in the future. This is especially useful for interplanetary transfers. For instance, if you want to go from Kerbin to Joule and use EVE to boost your trajectory. However, things get a bit weird if you project your path too far into the future. As an added bonus, KSP now offers you an option to always show you the closest approach to your target. This is useful for planning encounters with other planets and takes a lot of guesswork out of the equation. Aim camera! If you like to build big stuff, like me, then you have probably run into the problem that you want to select a certain part of your vehicle, but you can't really get it into focus because the camera is all over the place. With the aim camera option, you can now focus on the desired part, or a part close to it, and your spacefaring life suddenly gets a whole lot easier. Autostraught. Are you sick and tired of rockets wobbling around and losing control? Do you have increased your part count by adding a bazillion struts to keep your craft stable? Well, Squad appears to have a solution for you. Just right click on a part and use the autostrut option to safely connect it to the root part of your vehicle, the heaviest part or so called 
grandparent part. This has decreased the amount of struts I had to use significantly. And that is really helpful, since it reduces part count and therefore increases performance. Relays and probe control. You have already heard me rambling about how probes work differently in KSP 1.2 and how to control them if they are far away. Let's just say that I really like the implementation and that this adds another layer of gameplay for KSP that I really enjoy. There are some goofy things, you can for instance control a probe with a pilot stuck in a passenger cabin, but you can't control that passenger craft. But overall, a great feature to have. Stability. Kerbal Space Program 1.2 is the most stable release I have ever experienced. Granted, I'm using almost no mods at the moment, but my crash rate is basically non-existent. My software crash rate, that is. Vehicles in the game, well, that is a totally different story, of course. Okay, that's it for my list of the 10 best things in KSP 1.2. What do you think? What are your favorite new things or features in the new version? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, goodbye.